remind you both now. You're going to respect each other. No intentional fouls. Keep it clean. No unsportsmanlike conduct will be tolerated. Good luck to you both. Yeah, this fight fought at altitude. 6'6", six, 6'7 six, six, <laughs> and a half. Tonight's odds are provided by Fox Bet. You can see the odds Ready? here for this one at Jogba and Kojanu. For the main event, if you bet $900 on Adam Kovnatsky, you'd win $100. If you bet $100 on Hellenius, you would win $500. This FA at Jogba, Rajvan Kojanu. Again, the main event still to come. That is next. Adam Kovnatsky and Robert Hellenius. And F.A. Ajagba comes out, and coming off a fight, fellas, as we start round number one, where he faced adversity for the first time as a pro, was dropped by Iago Kaladze in the third round of his last fight. First time, Lennox, that he said that he'd been down all my life, in his words, never <laughs> been down before. Let me tell you, uh, somebody, you know, when you box, sometimes you have to get knocked down. And uh, i rather get knocked down in the gym. And I'm sure F.A. wanted to get knocked down in the gym than in the real fight. But he got up nicely. He wasn't phased. And he came back strong. Yeah, he was winning that fight clearly. And had Kaladze days just before he ran into a right hand. I know, Joe, you were calling that fight with us. Yeah. You said, hey, you, know, you just don't walk into this guy. And that's what Ajagba did. So having learned that, what, what are your thoughts on the whole... You know, he was able to come back and stop his man, do the whole thing. He looked great. But did get dropped in that fight. Right now, I like what I see from Ajagba. Uh, and... He's really got a lot more head movement. He's looking to move his head more, just like that. So he can get put in the Fury headlock right there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you, know, you know, Ronnie Shields told us, look, he's too straight up, and he's got to learn. You, you can drill a guy a, a lot over and over again. Sometimes they don't learn their lesson until they get dropped. And see, right now he's looking to slip a little bit more, move his head. But he looks dangerous to me. Yeah, he's a fighter again as he's you know, learning on the job. He only started boxing at 17. He played soccer throughout his, his whole life. He was quite a good soccer player in Nigeria. And then had uh, basically his first street fight against a, uh, what they call like a formidably built fellow, a bodybuilder type, bouncer type, who he said would not leave him be, would not leave his friends be. And Ajagba, having just been a soccer player, dropped him with the right hand. And therefore, his friend said, hey, why don't you go to the gym? Let him go. What soccer player would Frankly. pick a fight with a guy like that <laughs> anyway? <laughs> you know? I mean, please. Uh, <laughs> just the look of him. Yeah, out of both guys right now, Jogba is really starting with his job. And I've seen a lot of a job by a Jogba right now. That was a good hook to the body. Just a perfect spot, too, on Kajanu. So Jogba already did, uh, sees the initiative of right hand fired back by Kajanu. Kajama's not even throwing the job. He's looking for a, a counterpunch right now, and I think that's a mistake by him. Yeah, uh, Jogba looks comfortable moving forward and being able to pick his shots. Well, Razvan Kajama, you know, he's been around. He's, he's had a lot of trouble. His last five fights, his last four of them. Let him go! But, you know, he had a big win for when he started punching. out. Full step. Uh, they had high hopes for him. Uh, you know, he's part at my gym a few times, but uh, right now I think he just wants to make it through these first few rounds. Here you see a great body shot by Jogba, you know, mixing up his, his flurry right there, his punch count. He yep. wants to become a little more multi-dimensional in his attack, so it's a good point. We mentioned F.A. Jogba. Let's go back to that fight we were just talking about. That was only December 21st. He's gotten right back into the ring. And after dropping Iago Kaladze in the second round, Jogba hurt him in the third round. You're going to see it here. And look, Kaladze is all over the place. Looks like he is right for the picking. But he stepped in and got dropped by a right hand. Usually when guys are like this, they're dangerous. And uh, that's what uh, you have to really worry about. Anytime you have a guy hurt, you can't go in there with your chin up in the air. you got to still be concerned with his power. And you saw the knockdown and the knockout by Ajagba, so he was able to finish the deal. But when we asked him, when we asked him about that knockdown, he, he said, Dude, what do you remember for it? He said, it was like magic. I was suddenly down. <laughs> you know, like magic. Well, how did I get here? Ajagba right, here able to use a nice long now, jab now here. Too. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, here's he's the jab. This is the jab that he has to use. And turn it over like he did. He put those knuckles into that jab, which can feel like a right hand sometimes when you turn it over like that, right, Lennox? Yes. Yeah. 
you know, Henry Tillman, who's in the corner for Kajanu, said, look, he's, this guy's got a one-track mind with that right hand. Kajanu now pounding some yeah. shots, throwing right hands and a hook. But he, they want to take away that right hand. They say, hey, when you take that away, what's left? So they would like to force him out of that. Kajanu, much more aggressive here to start the second round. Well, there was that feel-out period I was talking about, and he's probably under orders to back him up and not to give up so much ground right now. And Tillman probably saw something that... Uh, you know, he figured if he backed up a jog bar, it would be more beneficial to Rosman. And, you know, he started out good. If he keeps it up, maybe he can pull a fury here, you know, put the pressure on and upset the apple cart by uh, by backing up the guy that wants to come forward. Well, I would think, at the very least, Lennox, he's got to make a jog ball a little more uncomfortable. That was a comfortable first round for him. Oh, yeah. Jog was very comfortable right now throwing his jab. And, you know, that, that's his prime weapon right there, and he's using it well. Chakba quickly became a standout amateur again, even though he just started boxing at 17. He won a gold medal at the African Games in 2015 and then represented Nigeria at the 2016 Olympics and got a win at the Olympics. So even though he started very late, really has shown a great aptitude for the sport. Yeah, Ronnie Shields said uh, that he wants the Jagba to really be more focused right now and, and stay focused and never take his eye off the ball, which is the opponent. Yeah, well, the, the lack of concentration got him knocked down for the Kaladze fight. But, I, you know, I noticed something that, you know, a job ball throws a good one-two, and he just finally went to it. He followed up that one-two and left up across the middle. I think it's open for him, and he could use it. And I think that Rosbon needs to do what he did at the beginning of the round, which is put more pressure on and keep the pressure on. He's going to have more luck if he doesn't back up too much with a job ball. Rosbaugh now has his hands up nice and high protecting himself. This is where, you know, a jog bar needs to go to the body, throw that left, right, and then come to the body with that left hook. You know, Joe, you mentioned that Kujanu had uh, a bunch of losses in a row. He'd lost four in a row before he won his last fight. Yeah. But he was fighting at the highest level. He lost to Joseph Parker, who I just mentioned earlier, Luis Ortiz, who really tested Deontay Wilder, and then the up-and-coming Daniel Dubois. So he is, he's fighting the, the best yeah. guys out there yeah, that, are not, that don't have titles. It was like uh, 60 wins versus, you know, like three losses, something like that. The guys are not, so you're exactly right. And he's in it with another guy with a great record, so... Kajano you know. trying with a three-punch combination. Uh, not much effect. A lot of what Kajano's doing right now is he's being a little bit uh, physical, which he needs to do, and uh, seeing what results from him. And he said he stood close to a Jogba at the weight because he just wanted to, he wanted to feel and see, is this guy really a heavyweight? He looks so skinny. Yeah. But here, like, maybe he's feeling the strength there. <laughs> that is an illegal move, though, Joe. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> he's afraid of a... We're back here in Brooklyn. Brian Ketty with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goose in ringside. Heidi Androl, Larry Hazard with us as well. Round three in the uh, black trunks with the red trim. That is F.A. Jagba of Nigeria and Rajvan of Kojanu out of originally Romania, now living in Monte Carlo. And uh, this was, too, as I think you guys mentioned, comedic effect. Right. Uh, is, is he yeah, pleading with yeah. Ron Lipton? No, he looks horrified. He's expecting a punch in the back of the head. Well, he, oh, he, be, yeah. he, he was looking at Lipton, though. You know, it, 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 was, it was a bit comical. You know, Rosman's got a great <laughs> sense of humor. I know the guy. And he, he, you could tell in the fighter <laughs> meetings, he was very... Protect comical. yourself yeah. at all times. Yeah, of course. But, but again, yeah, he wasn't really frightened there, I can tell you Look, that. A job, but yeah. with another... Another good body shot. Two, three good body shots already in this round in the opening minute. Another one. Yeah. Hook to the body is working beautifully for a jog ball. Well, he really is going to the body, as you pointed out, by this round more than any other round so far. Well, his corner, you know, told him to go to the body and come back up with that left uppercut, and he hasn't tried the uppercut yet. There it goes. Ronnie Shields, we saw him in the corner for a jog ball in the last round. And I asked him, hey, what type of pace do you want to see a job at? Like, clearly, he's still learning on the job, but he's a nice-looking prospect. And he said, yeah, we'd like to step up after this fight, win this fight, step up, and then fight top ten opponents next year. That is kind of aggressive. you agree with that, Joe, or what do you think he'd be ready for? Yeah, I, I look, I mean, based on the fact that he's now just starting to get the idea of moving his head a little bit more and uh, using that upper body movement, uh, you know, I think given a, a few more fights, he's going to be ready to take on a, a very top contender. 
Yeah, no doubt. He's got the power. He's got the look. He's got the athleticism. And I think dedication as well. Good and uppercut. He, yeah, by a jog. But that, yeah, it's becoming a little more uh, multi-dimensional in his yeah. attack. And, and on top of that, he's got one of the great trainers of all time in this corner. See, what a jog but does very well is, you know, when, when, they, when the referee breaks them, he comes back and he's the first one to jab. Just pawing with the jab there to the body, but that's a nice little scoring shot. Very active with the jab. You see uh, getting a little more of the arsenal from a jog by, and that's part of the progression of these you know, young heavyweights who started late. Yeah, we saw Frank Sanchez, who's been boxing uh, most of his life, over 200 amateur fights. And this is a jog by very different situation where he only has eight years in the sport itself. Well, you see Rosman, he's getting, a, you know, he's getting a little courage worked up right now. He's starting to forearm a jog bar against the ropes and then use the right hand off of that and, and work his combinations. Uh, I think he's doing the right thing. At least he's in the fight right now. He's not out of the fight. Final seconds here in round three. You can see the effect of those punches already on Kishanu's face. It's a flash right hand comes out from a jog bar at the belt. There is Robert Hellenius out of Finland, 36 years old, getting ready for his shot against Adam Kovnatsky right here in Brooklyn. That's our main event. It's coming up next. Uppercut there by Razvan Kujanu in the black trunks. Come on, man. As you see, F.A. Ajagba in the black and the red trim. Let's go to Heidi Andrel. Heidi? Thank you very much. Here with Ronnie Shields, F.A.'s trainer. I know you said that you wanted more concentration. He seems very concentrated and focused here tonight. What did you tell him going into this round? Well, you know, just he, you need to go about it a little bit more. The guy's getting tired, but, you know, he's, he wanted to hit him up top too much. You know, we, we need to go to the body to soften him up a little bit, and then come on top with a shot. Excellent. Thanks, Ronnie. Brian, back to you. Heidi, thank you. Yeah, Chakba just look at like it's a little more in the arsenal now, so in a little wider repertoire in this fight. Again, as he steps up, it's only his 13th professional fight. What a just a classy-looking heavyweight. Brian, what a job I kind of found this round is he's looping that right hand around the glove to the ear, and he kind of stunned uh, Rosvon in the very beginning of the fight. He's probably hit him with four or five of those already this round. So, so learning on the job, getting yeah, a little more creative. Yeah, yeah Rosvon's a little bit tired right now because he's Step holding back. for no reason. You know, no it's not, and, so and, and Rosvon is only, he only had that very active round two. It's not like he should be exhausted right. at this point. And he says he had a very good camp. He sparred with Frank Sanchez getting ready for this fight. Well, you know, it's the fourth round of a ten-round fight. And there is such thing as a, you second know, can't get your second win. And he might get tired right now, but if he stays in the fight, uh, he'll be able to get that second win. But the, pro great the problem is, yeah. when he's in this position right now not getting hit with silly shots he's definitely got to keep his head moving like he's doing yeah. but not getting hit is very important at this stage he's still in the fight he's not out of the fight right now he's just got to assert his will on the jog bar if he wants to get something done here and actually try to stun or hurt uh, a jog bar at some point in this round or the upcoming rounds and I like what Ajag was doing. He's got to be circling because he can't be caught against the ropes uh, because that's where he's at a weakness right there. Uh, here's, here's a little replay we're going to show right there, Paul. Here comes he's setting up the jab. And there's that little chopper right hand around. And that, you can see him smacking his gloves together. That hurt him, see? He gave it over time when he hit his gloves there. Well, you know, that was a good shot. Able to duck under that right hand from Kujano is a dangerous shot. So Ajagba also showing some good head, head movement here. Final 30 seconds of the fourth round, scheduled for 10. And again, the main event is up next. Adam Kovnatsky and Robert Kalinius. This is truly an international event here tonight. Poland, Finland, Nigeria, Romania, Cuba, United States. Here in New York City, all heavyweights. Another good round. Headlock applied by Kujanu. Another illegal move. It will be back. Time. We are here in Brooklyn. You know, yesterday, talking to all the fighters, and we were in this beautiful spot as we start and get back to this round five here for F.A. Ajagba and Rajvan Kujanu. And in that fighter meeting, we were at Lennox, remember, we had the beautiful view of Manhattan and the skyscrapers. We asked, asked Ajagba, hey, do you come to New York? Do you ever get out? Do you ever see anything? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. No skyscrapers. Does not like heights. And in fact, only two people did not go out on the balcony to see this magnificent view from Brooklyn of Manhattan. 
And that was a jumper and our own Joe Goose. Yeah, I'm guilty. Do they not Thank have you. buildings over four stories in LA? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, the railing was about three feet high. <laughs> you know. It, uh, <laughs> Let's go to Heidi Andrew. I'll get out of this. Heidi. Thank you very much, Brian. Here with Henry Tillman Ross, this is coach. I said I heard you saying back him up. We've seen him do that in the start in the second round. What are you seeing that you want him to do more of? Well, I, I want him to take his jab. He's, he's trying to only jab him in the head. I'm going to jab him in the shoulder, the chest. Just make contact, push him back, keep him off balance. He ain't throw the right hand with the left hook behind it. Excellent. Thanks so much, coach. All right, Brian, back to you. Yeah, that's Henry Tillman again, 1984 Olympic gold medalist. He was uh, he got by Mike Tyson twice in the Olympic trials and in the amateurs and went on to be a professional fighter as well 25 and 6 but that is uh, again it's a quite the claim to fame gold medalist on what is an outstanding United States Olympic team in 1984 and again managed to stop Mike Tyson twice no. didn't stop okay, him he didn't stop it but got wins against the rising tide of Tyson before Tyson went on to become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. A Jogba has to really worry because, uh, you know, when he throws his left-right combination, he's leaving himself out, out there. So he's got to really come back and worry about defense. I like what Henry Tillman said to uh, Razvan uh, Kajami, but to back him up a little bit. He's obviously a, a power puncher like a Jogba, wants to jump forward. Yeah, uh, correct. And you, you never know how good they are going backwards. Exactly. And he, they both landed some good body shots in this round but uh, it looks like uh, uh, Kajana is actually getting a little bit of a second win here in the, in the sixth round. Kajana is looking for that opening. I haven't seen him throw a real telling uh, power shot yet but uh, he's throwing good combinations. I have but he's missed them. <laughs> you know, see like that. You know, he's just he's missing the big shots. So when he does get in close he should take that opportunity to not get tied up or tie up but to use crazy right hand but to use his inside game inside trade punches yeah part of the reason is he's telegraphing the right hand you know well he certainly did there but see that left touch he just used yes. now the body's got there though that's what he's got to do when he gets in close he's got to lift the body and head final seconds of this round our co-feature in Brooklyn And here you see Efe throwing a great body shot Box. right on the belt line. And Kajano's just sticking out his tongue. Yeah, now here's here's what I don't like. That's, you know, it wasn't a big shot, but that's called a rabbit punch. That's an intentional punch to the back of the head. And believe me, I'm all for the roughness of this sport, but you have no armor to protect you, and your brainstem is back there, and believe me, I hate people that rabbit punch. I don't like it. It's a dangerous thing. Ron Lipton uh, didn't speak to him, but you could, you're right. Even if it's just tapping him, and uh, you could take a point away, you could do an awful lot more. Good body work there by Ajaka. Body shots uh, so far, 23 from Ajaka, 13 from Kajanu. So actually reasonably close, or a little closer than the but Ajaka is continually going to the body in this fight. That's kind of a oh. and nice little four or five punch combination. Kajanu can you know, talk to him. He's complaining again about getting hit in the back of the head. I didn't see that. Kind of cuffing with that right hand around the side of the head. Yeah, but Kajanu, you know, he's all he's doing is accepting punches, but he's not answering back with the, any punches of his own. And there's he's, a big difference between, like, if you move your head and you get hit toward the side, and we mentioned yeah, that with, with Fury right. and Wilder last week, and then, by the way, in the, two weeks ago, and then even in the first fight, remember, it was Fury who got hit on the side of the head. Big difference there, and then hitting a man on the back of the head. Very big difference. A low shot there. Over there. Five. Ron Lipton sets five minutes. Yeah, Jogba has up to five low minutes. Low blow, unintentional. Don't think that wasn't a little retaliation for what uh, Ron got Ron's up to five doing. minutes. You let me know. Feeling that he's getting hit behind the head. Mm -hmm. a way unintentional too much low blow. Happening about it. Here, unintentional Lipton. low blow. Call it an unintentional un low blow. Unintentional low blow. You tell me when you're ready to go. You ready? <laughs> Was that a? <laughs> Unintentional, Time. intentional, low blow. Yeah. Nice. Jogba's ready to go. Might have been a brush back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens when things get rough in there, but you have to, uh, we'll watch again and see exactly what happened. Well, he's, being, he's got his head pulled down, so Jogba was pulling his head down, 
And uh, if you punch, oh. Beautiful shots there by Ajagba. Rajano staggered by that, comes back and fires and slaps yeah. a right hand off the side of Ajagba's head. Rajano back on the attack. Best success for him in this fight here in round six. But after he got rocked, Ajagba has been consistent in his volume here. A little right hand over the top. Uh -huh. Calling Ajagba on the back of the head. Straight up the middle comes Ajagba. Again, though, if you're dipping and turning and the guy throws an overhand right, then you have to be catch it at the tail end with your head down. I mean, that is not a rabbit. Listen, I was never a fan of the right hook. So I never really threw the right hook. It always a left hook. But yeah, I, I don't think you can generate a good, a good amount of power with a right, uh, right hook. Unless you're in close. Larry Hazard, by the way, giving all five rounds to FM job, but no shot there. That was just um, erratic in his attack. Doesn't it seem that way? Yeah. He, he will suddenly become inspired, yes. and then it goes away. Yeah. When he's inspired, he's a fairly dangerous guy. Yeah, it's inconsistent. Uh, I think it's John about being very consistent. He's, he's kind of following a game plan here. It's body work there by Pichano here in the final seconds. And here we see F.A. throwing some good uppercut, good left uppercut. Here's F.A. throwing that right hook, left hook, right hook, catching. The one you said you don't like. <laughs> There's a straight right hand that you like, a missed left hook. But, uh, you know, Kajanu, I think, may get, yeah, there's the right hand he got in. I've had a nice little short left hook, and he's firing Second that. Up. Let's go. Okay, and here we go. There's that little chopper around the side that you don't like. Hey, Shano, listen, yeah, every punch hurts punch once, you. right? <laughs> you know? Pajano able to earn a little respect there later in the round, but yeah. in that sixth round, F.A. Ajagba landed a fight-high 33 punches. You see Pajano uh, only 13. So it is uh, round seven now. F.A. Ajagba getting the uh, black trunks with the red trim. Pajano there in the black trunks. Let's go to Larry Hazard. Larry, every round? Every single round, guys. Listen, Ajagba's putting on a clinic with this guy. A round is three minutes. You know, you can't give a guy a round because he... He fights for 10, 15 minutes. I got this. I got a jock by head, 60 to 54 every round. I'm just waiting for him to sit down on one of those body shots and we can go home. <laughs> well, wait, we got one more fight, Larry. Then we go home. Well, there we go. I get your point. And it is. I, he's right. Larry is right in that consistent attack from the job, but, uh, just a total yeah. professional effort. And Kushana will get angry and then start fighting back. He's like, okay, you know, yeah, he'll he fight back. He has sporadic moments during the rounds and uh, where he lands a couple body shots. And Larry's exactly right, as usual. And uh, like right there, that was a nice little shot. And again, Kushana came out and actually landed two right hands at the beginning of this round. Uh, while we were uh, assessing things, but um, again, the play is always being taken away by a jog bot, more or less. Kajano has his head in one spot all the time. All a jog bot has to really do is throw a combination, a four or five punch combination, and uh, Kajano's head will still be there. He'll have a lot more success. You're right, and there's that. Well, he, he landed a nice little left up in that right hand when he was talking. And I think the, the body shot that Larry was asking for, a good one landed, but Chizaka took the kind of good. Chizaka with success straight up the middle, throwing jabs, then right hands afterwards. Uh, speaking of which, Adam Kovnatsky, uh, he's just like another guy who's just a basic boxer, comes out firing jabs and right hands right away. He's up next to the man. Mentioned that they broke the record for heavyweight punches thrown in that last fight. Chris Ariola was trained by Joe Goosen for that fight against Adam Kovnatsky, breaking the record set by Ike Ibeabuchi and David Toon. Wow, that is a lot of weight going against each other, those two. So I trained Toon for a couple of fights. He's probably the most powerful guy, you know, when you look at the mix of the cushion. There is no cushion big enough. For that to stop the power that I felt from that guy. He makes so powerful. Right? Yeah, again, he had to fight with Lennox Lewis. Lennox defend his title. He's a body work there by Kishano as he gets the shot, but he's in the corner now. And he's able to keep him in a position until Jogba is able to spin out. Good move by Jogba.
see that Jogba really doesn't really need to use no power punches. He can use short little punches, short little combinations. That, that's doing the job. That'll really open the door for a big punch. That ends that round. Uh, let's get to Heidi Andral now. Again, earlier in the evening, she caught up with Adam Kovnatsky. Thank you very much, Brian. Well, Adam, big day. Here we are. I saw you on Instagram. You know, you went to the barbershop, got things cleaned up, got a workout in this morning. What was the rest of the day like for you? I'm pretty much the same as every, uh, it's a routine. So, get a workout in, pick a little sweat, eat, and rest. Speaking of rest, I know you're a new father. You actually told me that your son slept in the ho hotel room with you. It's not often that we hear fighters have that. Was he a good boy? Did you get a good night's rest? Yeah, well, full nine hours, so I'm very rested. And I can't wait to uh, fight tonight. In terms of your last fight, you had, you know, you broke records against with Chris Ariola, the volume and punches. What did you learn from that fight, and do you expect that kind of volume here tonight against Robert? Yeah, for sure. I think if I'm able to bring the pressure and uh, throw as many punches, it won't last that long. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much, as always, Brian. We'll send it back to you guys. Heidi, thank you. Again, Adam Kovnatsky and his wife, Justina, had a, a baby boy six months ago, so their lives have changed. Their baby, Kaz, is home tonight. And speaking of the heavyweight division, Adam Kovnatsky, again, uh, will headline our card here tonight. He's a top 10 heavyweight. And uh, we have heavyweight news coming up later. We'll talk more about heavyweight title fight and a heavyweight champion and Joe Goosen is somehow involved in all this Joe Goosen is what I'm told <laughs> is Joe Goosen right on there Joe you're not saying anything come on well, I'm waiting for the uh, the unveiling you know? give us a big <laughs> reveal that'll be later we'll talk to the heavyweight division and Joe's got a little news there and as we're in round eight here FAA Jogba really getting the job done against Rajvan Kojano hook lands again as see Kojano's face is just getting now getting all beat up. Now, you know, since Demirazin went the distance with Ajaka, nobody else has really got, everyone else has got knocked out. And I gotta tell you, uh, 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 Razvan here is, is actually holding his own. He's not winning anything, but he's not getting hurt. He hasn't been buzzed, he hasn't been dropped yet. You know, I gotta give him a lot of credit. Razvan turned southpaw there, trying something new. Might as well. Getting shut up, but you're right, he tried that hook from the left side. Well, you know, he turned southpaw for a second. I thought Joe was just going to, like, go into a panic. Well, no, you're the one who panics when I mentioned <laughs> southpaw. Just so an inside joke. Sorry, I even brought it up. Right. And again, in, in, in fighter meetings, it comes up again and again and again. Joe Goosen has an unnatural fear of left-handed fighters. Right. Southpaw phobia. Now, there's this, there's this, what, that's not the news, by the way. There's a word for that. We're going to look it up. See rights and lefts. Coming from Ajagba here in the eighth round as the action slows, but again, Ajagba has been consistent in his attack. And again, I think you have to make different comparisons, right? When you look at Frank Sanchez, what we saw in Ajagba, we're just in very different places. Oh! It wasn't right now. Kajanu takes a knee. Three, four, five, six, seven. Give me your gloves. Okay. I don't want you to take too much more posture. You understand? You gotta show me something. Take a step forward. Step to the side. You gotta show me something. Box. Ron Lipton giving the warning there, and uh, Kajano got up at nine. He gave himself every yeah, heart think, of those seconds. Kajano's gonna try for a last hurrah here. Another right hand landed hard from Ajakba, though. And you see that the face is just getting weathered by Kajano. He's taking a beating. He's game, and another combination oh, straight up the middle by Ajakba. There it is, there it is. Kajano backs up, and Ron Lifted is close, but he doesn't stop it. He was thinking about stopping it, Can't wondering if Kajano could defend himself. And that is really the number one thing you have to judge. Kajano says, come on, right. and he finishes the round. Ron Lipton, the referee, was very close to stopping that fight. You see him warning Kajanu there, even though Kajanu was game and was saying, come on, you know this is just about over. Where's Israel? Israel, Israel, Israel. Ron, look. 
And this I'm, came I'm, I'm, I'm stop the fight. in a moment, Joe Goosen, no, where just... it was Ajaba had slowed things down and waited for that right hand. Well, you're right. Actually, Kajanu had slowed things down, and he uh, he really uh, came out very uh, complacent in the ninth round as if he was tired and, and, and kind of beat. And there it was. Just a straight right hand right on the temple. But right now, Ronnie Shields is really egging uh, Jogba on for a knockout. He wants a knockout here. He doesn't want another distant fight like with the Bears. Yeah, I believe Jogba is going to come out strong oh, this yeah. round. Yeah, I have a feeling that Ron Lipton is going to probably stop this in the first round. It was right, 30 seconds. He, he was very round. close, Joe Wright, and Kujano was up against the ropes. It looked like he might not be able to defend himself, but then he backed off when he saw that Kujano was able to keep his hands up. So here now, round nine, scheduled for 10. Jogba trying again with the right hand. Kujano's body language is not good right now. He is beaten up. His energy is on the wing. He is trying Step to uh, wrestle Step. and keep a Jogba at bay. See the swelling over that right eye from the consistent jab from Ajakba. Right hand coming from Ajakba. Good jab, snaps the head back. Kujano really not doing anything right now. No, not even throwing punches. Well, he throws one there, throws the hook to answer back. Ajakba just trying to finish the job and close the show. Yeah, Rosvon in the corner was telling Ron Lipton, please don't stop the fight. He wants to go the distance. He doesn't want another knockout on his record. So he's going to try to survive, and he kind of tried to convince Lipton to let the fight go on. But, yeah. Nice combination from Kojanu. Uh -huh. Firing back. He was able to block that right hand and come back with a combination of his own. Everybody needs to throw a combination where it ends with an uppercut, and right? he'll have really good success with that. He just threw it and missed it. Right there. Let's try it again, and now right hand's over the top. Jab backs up to Jano again. You see the jab snap in the head back and then the right hand to the body. Jano is talking to him, but he is getting roughed up. And Jano can't even see some of these punches coming because his eyes are swelled up. So he's finding it difficult to even be defensive against uh, Ajaba. Yeah, that, that, that right eye especially, Lennox, you're right about that. Break. And it's almost Full all the way closed. Ajaba needs to keep his step head back. up a little bit. Well, you know, what's funny is Kajano just had a jog bar against the ropes, throwing some punches at him, but the jog was back to the ropes. Uh, Takes him with the hook, but yeah. a hook fired back by Kajano. Good left hook by a jog bar. Yeah, you can't, a jog bar cannot get lazy in here. Nice straight right hand. I mean, we've learned that in his last fight. He's kind of just standing in front of Kajano now and just launching, but he's got to be somewhat careful. Winding up with the hook, flicking the right hand. This is where a jog bar... Needs to step to the side Ooh. and throw that. Oh, there's, there's that uppercut. uppercut. Yep. Yeah. Uppercut punch, coming up back. the middle. Step well, back. We've got 40 break. seconds left Let's to go. survive this fight. Okay, we're taking too many shots. Uh, 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 Ron lifted his close again. Back. Box. And again, body language, energy. This came up in uh, the Deontay Wilder fight where Mark Breland, I thought, rightly threw in the towel and was criticized by Deontay Wilder for it. But you look at the body language from Kajanu. Not good right now. Oh. He takes it. He's just had too much, That's and it's it. over. That's it. That's it. That's it. He waved it off. Ron Lipton has waved it off. It's over. F.A. Ajagba beat his man down and gets his 13th professional win. I thought Ajagba really looked good in this fight, to tell you the truth, against a guy who was in great shape, who's a, a, a wily veteran, who's been in with a lot of top guys, and Ajagba took him out and dismantled him through the whole fight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different things by Ajagba. We've seen uppercuts, we've seen hooks. Yeah. I mean, he learned a lot from this fight as well. Yeah, he Especially, did. you know, fighting a guy just as tall as him, learning that his job is much, way superior than the other guy, and uh, he was using it well. Yeah, he did. And I think he also followed instructions well from Ronnie Shields. Ronnie Shields wanted that knockout. Believe me, I've been in that situation where you're dominating the fight. You got the power to take a guy out. You got the guy hurt, worn out. You got to get that knockout. And then that final knockout happened as uh, Kershano's, I think, just body just finally gave out. He was getting beaten down. Yeah. Mentioned the energy level was just sinking. And he had just found a point where, I think wisely, his self-preservation, he took a knee. At that point, that's all Ron Lipton needed to see. Yeah. Great job by Lipton. What a pro. What a pro. We'll step aside. We'll get the particulars of this and get you ready for the main event. We've got a heavyweight knockout in Brooklyn. Here you go. Yeah, a jogba, 
Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. Eighth straight fight here in Brooklyn or Long Island. He fought at the Nassau Coliseum once in that run. He's taking on Robert Hellenius up next. But here, F.A. Ajakba just doing a nice job all night. Getting to 13-0 and eventually stopping Rajvan Kujano, who could just take no more. He would take a knee. He was already on borrowed time. And referee Ron Lipton steps in and it's the end of the night hey tomorrow on fox it's a duel in the desert as the nascar cup series heads to phoenix kyle bush looks to defend last year's win all the action from the track starts at 3 30 p.m eastern on fox and on the fox sports app again nascar for phoenix tomorrow afternoon let's go to the ring and jimmy lennon jr and ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 46 seconds in round number 9. A referee in charge stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated. The one and only F.A. Ajagba. F.A. Ajagba gets again to 13-0, 11 of his wins by knockout. And he is aesthetically pleasing, fellas. He is a fun fighter to watch the way he throws his punches the way as we said throughout the fight he got very creative in this fight as well let's go back through the fight right now in the early going it was a jogba asserting